Hello again and welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to be continuing with the concept of critical path and talk about slack time and how we calculate slack time using the critical path method. So to begin with, let's talk about what slack time is. When we go through a process flow, and there's a variety of different activities, and a lot of those activities are on different paths through the flow, some of those activities don't have to be started right on time. We know that the critical path is the longest path through the entire process, but some paths are shorter in time. So that means there's room for delay. And that's what we're looking at. We're trying to figure out how much time there is between when an activity can start, which is the earliest time it can start, and when an activity has to start. And that's the latest time it has to start. So slack can be said to be the difference between the latest start time, LST, and the early start time, EST. So that tells us how long an activity can be delayed before it has to be done. To in order to figure out slack, we use what's known as the critical path method, where we take a forward pass through the flow diagram to determine when all of the activities can start, the early start time, and as a result, also when the earliest they will finish. That's the early finish time. Then we take a backward pass between the flow diagram to figure out when the latest each activity can start and when the latest each activity will finish. That's the LST, latest start time, and LFT, the latest finish time. Then we compare the two. If there is a difference between the early start time and the late start time, we know there's slack. So we're actually going to use the same example from the critical path problems before where we're cleaning an office. And if you recall, there were six activities there, each with different times. And when we put it together, we had a process flow diagram that looked like this. There were three potential paths through the process, ABEF, ACEF, and ADF. And each path had a different amount of time. So what we need to do is figure out how much delay time we have for different activities in this process. So we're going to take a forward pass through the flow diagram. Starting with activity A, it starts right at time zero. It's the first activity in the entire process. So at time zero, that's when activity can start. And then we add the 55 seconds that the activity lasts, so we know that it can finish at time 55. We're starting at zero, we're adding 55 seconds for the activity, and we're finishing at time 55. Now, activity B has to wait until activity A is completed, which means activity B cannot start until activity A finishes, so the earliest it can start is time 55. We add the 300 seconds that activity lasts, and so activity B can finish at 355. We do the same thing with activity C. It can start at time 55, and it finishes up at 145. And activity D, starting at 55 and finishing 360 seconds later at 415. So now when we take a look at activity E, remember activity E cannot start until both B and C are finished. So although activity C can finish at 145, activity E can't start then. It has to wait until B is done. So the early start time for E is 355. Then we add the 40 seconds for that activity to make it 395. So here we have activity E finishing at 395 and activity D finishing at 415. Both of them have to be done before activity F can start. So activity D finishes later than E. So that's why the early start time for F is at 415. Then we add the 40 seconds of the activity. So we know that it finishes at 455. 
So that was our forward pass through the process flow diagram, and we figure out when everything starts. So now let's do our backward pass. Activity F, since it's the last activity, we know that it finishes at 455, and so the earliest it can start is 415, and the latest it can start is 415 as well. So that activity has a slack of zero. Now let's go back to activity E. Activity E must be finished by 415. So that's the latest finish time, 415. Which means when we subtract out the 40 seconds of the activity, the latest it can start is 375. So there is a difference between the early start time and the late start time of 20 seconds. That's the slack for activity E. Let's do another one. Let's take a look at activity D. Activity D must be finished by 415 because that's the latest activity F can start. So if it must be finished by 415, the LFT, we subtract out the 360 seconds of the time for D and we find out that our latest start is 55. There's no difference between the late start and the early start, so we have a slack of zero. Let's do another one. Here's activity B. Activity B says it has to be done by 375 because that's the latest activity E can start. Notice the latest start time of the activity that follows it is the latest finish time for that activity. So again, the latest finish time, 375, we subtract out 300 for the activity time, so we have a late start time of 75. We have a slack of 20. We do the same thing for activity C. And then when we get back to activity A, let's take a good hard look at that. Activity A must be finished by what time? It has to be finished by the earliest time of all of the activities following it. So activity B, well, that has to start by 75. Activity C, well, that doesn't have to start until 295. And activity D has to start by 55. So the latest activity A can finish is 55. So the latest it can start is zero. So there's no slack for activity A. And it's very important to realize that when you look at this process flow diagram, all of the activities on the critical path will always have a slack of zero. It may take a few times for you to understand this, so I suggest that you go over this example a couple of times just to make sure you understand the forward pass and the backward pass. In the next session, we're going to be talking about process efficiency. I'll see you then.